Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Daryl Urbanski, your host as always. And today we are joined by Avery Banta, VP of HR at Globe, where she's revolutionizing how work works. With over 25 years in the field, Avery is a master of transforming organizations through people. She's a project management professional with a knack for agile methods, certified by the world's best schools like North Northwestern's Kellogg and INSEAD. At Globe, Avery leads initiatives that reshape HR, enhance change management, and refine organizational development. As a former Forbes HR council member, her mission is simple, to create dynamic workplaces where talent thrives. Avery's approach isn't just effective, it's changing the game in human resources and business strategy. I've asked her to join us here today to share her story and insights into how we can all help our teams and companies perform better. So Avery, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you? Daryl, thank you so much for that beautiful introduction. As beautiful as your background. <laughs> All good. Just yeah, like probably. you, I'm enjoying the tropical weather in Manila. Yeah, yeah, you and me both. So now I always like to ask, before we get into like things that you've learned and what you're focused on now, how did you even get into this field? Is this something that your parents did? Is this a generational trade of sort? That is so funny. Never was it a plan of my mother or my father to put me in a profession like this, nor is it a generational thing because life before is so different from what it is today. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. So how I ended up here, I, I believe in destiny. I graduated with a degree in mass comm, but my work today is not really about comms, but a lot of comms. Mm -hmm. So I think my background, my experiences prepared me for what I do today. It's all a series of choices, personal choices. I first started as a management trainee in a consulting firm, then later on moved to a to an express and logistics company. And then now I'm with Globe. I've been here for 15 years. It's my longest work relationship mm -hmm. so far, enjoying my work because every day is a new day. Everything I do here is always new. So that's how I ended up here. It's very exciting. For those that don't know, Globe is the largest, if one of the largest, if not the largest, uh, telecommunications company in the Philippines, right? They do. Yeah. Yes, yes. I get my load every, all the time. I'm always re-upping on the Globe. I don't know which one, I, the 299 plus or something. I re-up that a couple of times a month. Huge company. Yeah. 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 Connects the whole country. And 50 mm -hmm. years is a lot. Obviously, and you've climbed the corporate ladder. Can you walk us through some of the challenges that you face in your career, or at least the things that you had to learn in order to keep not every, how many people does Globe employ? They all like 6,000, maybe more? We are 7,000 plus workforce strong. Not everybody gets to become VP in that kind of company. So can you talk us through, was it your intention, your plan to climb the corporate ladder, so to speak? Was it something that you just came into? Did you? Were there trainings that you knew you had to get? Can you speak to that a little bit? To the surprise of most people, I never really aspired for my role. And I don't really aspire for positions. Mm -hmm. I like getting things done. My personality is really results, goals, and time is always important. Mm -hmm. I'm not motivated by positions. I don't like moving up. But I guess the reward of good work is more work. And you get promoted as well. So... The promotion is more of a blessing, but it's something that I did not really work hard for. It's something that I never aspired for in my life. What I aspire for would be helping other people mm -hmm. and getting things done. So that's that. really shit for me. Okay. In my 15 years in Globe, most the two times I got promoted, they both came unexpected. And the time that I got them, I'm like, why are you promoting me? I just want to work and I just want to do good work. That's it. Because mm. it can be scary. There's something called the Peter Principle, which, which is, is yeah, it's not everybody, but they say you get promoted to your highest level of incompetence. So the example uh, is maybe you're a good sales rep, and so they go, "What well, should be the sales team manager?" So you become the sales team manager. You do you do a good job at that. And they go, "You know what? You should be the sales team trainer type thing." And hey, you should be the regional manager. And they keep promoting you. This is not every case. It's just an example. But for some people, they keep getting promoted until they get to a, a tier where they suck. But mm -hmm. because they were good everywhere else. They can't be demoted. And then they <laughs> get promoted. It's called the Peter principle. You end up with all these Peters in your company if you're not careful type things. Uh, I don't think that's you because it sounds like already 
and you're so focused on results and the goals and time. And that's just such a, as soon as you said that, I get it, but mm-hmm. there's so many people that they mm-hmm. just show up and collect a paycheck. That's you know? true. You are correct. That is not me because what my people do, I can also do. I get right. my hands dirty. There is no work that is too small enough. Nobody that is too low in the position level that I will talk with. I guess that's also one of the reasons why I managed to get to a position where I am. I do any work, Daryl. I never choose. In a meeting, I can take minutes for you, but I will make sure that whatever minutes I take for you, it will count. It will drive the results. So I think it's always about making sure that what you do, no matter how small or big, they actually drive results. They actually get the objectives that you want, not just for your team, but also for your company. I, and, I love that. Uh, to your point on Peter's principle, you are also correct. You look around, not just in my company, but in even in other organizations. There are people like that. They get promoted and they get promoted to a level of income. But that, but that is not their fault at all. That is the fault of their leaders because... It is the role, our role as leaders, to make sure that we prepare our children, our people, mm. to be successful in their roles, right? So it's a journey for everyone. We yeah. have to make sure that we journey our people and we prepare them. Pretty much like you have a family of kids, right? You don't expect them to be just born genius. They're right. lucky. You're lucky if you have kids who are born genius, but... In many cases, you have to condition them. You have to nurture them. You have to parent them well. We we are also fortunate. We are born in the era of nannies. We have the luxury of getting somebody to take care of our kids while we are enjoying our lives in our corporate offices. But at the end of the day, Daryl, I still have parenting duties, right? I have to take care of my kids. So same thing works in a company. My people, they are my children. I have to take care of them. I have to develop them. I have to grow them so that they don't end up personifying and bringing to life what you said as Peter's principle. Yeah, I I think it's super powerful. Just even the can-do attitude that is underneath, like for a lot of people that aren't reading between the lines, that is such a powerful thing that you're really, it sounds like you're really like, we're here to achieve a goal and produce a result. And there's so many people that don't get that. We're actually changing our lease. We're renting. Cause I told you before, we've got some land and we're building a house mm-hmm. and not be finished being built by the time this is done, but we've already decided we're going to move because the admin for this neighborhood is not like perfect example is I found some mail that was blowing around walking, was walking somewhere today. I picked up, I went to give it to the guard at the gate and he was like, nope, don't give it to me. But I don't know who lives here. I don't know what address. I don't know any of this stuff. And then he told me, finally tells me to go to the admin office. I was annoyed because I'm like, I'm going somewhere. Like you, what are you here for? So fine. I go to the admin office. I give them the letter. And they sent out an announcement basically saying to everyone, like, hey, don't give us other people's mail. Hey, it's not our duty. And in my mind, I'm like, what are you, how are you the admin of this community if you're not? And then maybe, I don't know, maybe I just don't know what I don't know. But it just, it feels like they want to charge for everything. You're getting a delivery truck to your house. Oh, well, you got to pay a, a road service fee for that. They want to accumulate payments, but they don't want to serve. The whole point of a neighborhood is to create a foster community and mm-hmm. like make friends with your neighbors. And wow. And there's lots of empty lots in this neighborhood. And I feel like part of it might be the fact that people aren't lovely. And it's a great location, great spot, up and coming area, very fancy, very ritzy, but it's mm-hmm. missing something if that makes sense. And actually where we're thinking of moving is more of a community. It's still nice, all that stuff, but it's got the community part that this place is lacking. And it's that whole, they're lacking that can-do attitude. They don't have to do everything, but I don't know if you're the community admin office and I find someone's mail and I don't know which streets, like, I don't know whose house this is. And I drop it off. And then you send out an announcement saying, don't be given as other people like, oh, okay. It's just weird. I just love that you're talking about taking care of people. Can you speak to, because I feel like we're also, since COVID, we've pivoted. We're before, and maybe the perfect person in HR to speak to this, Mm -hmm. before, typically companies would have a position and they would post a job and hire outside people to fill it. But now there's more of an emphasis on growing talent from within. Is that something that you're seeing too? Can you speak to that? Why? Oh, yes, you are correct. We have to give an equal, if not more, focus to our people internally because 
they're already here. They're homegrown. We have spent invested time, energy, effort so that they will be with us, helping us deliver the results, right? So to your point, while we continue to look outside for fresh blood, because we also need them or else we will all become legacy in the company. We have to make sure that the ones inside, we take care of them as well. And pandemic and uh, pre-pandemic, pandemic, post-pandemic, post -pandemic, I think our efforts of taking care of our people have been the same. Perhaps a little bit more pronounced during pandemic because we were not seeing each other. But personally, I would say the effort that we give is exactly the same, but we always ground it in terms of what are their current realities? What do they need now? For right. sure, what they need now is different from what they needed during pandemic. Now, because we are on a hybrid mode, hybrid as in some days we are in the luxury of our home, right. in the comfort and luxury of our home. Some days we are here in the office. Oh, so we do have programs that cater to both uh, people who are work from home and in the office. I love so, that. Yes. Yeah. So we haven't really shifted back to full in work in office. Yeah. We are still on hybrid. And I think right now it's working for us. So the programs we do, Daryl, are catering to both setups. Okay? Yeah. yeah. No, I, I agree. I've been working remotely since 2012. You're just not going to train a championship NBA team over Zoom. Like it just isn't going to happen. There's mm -hmm. some intangible. So at least for, I'm really surprised to hear that, that Globe's doing that. Maybe you can talk a little bit, a bit about the structure of it. For us, we do team meetings Monday and Thursday and in-person days, Monday and Friday. Mm. So one team meeting, everyone's home, one team meeting, everyone's together. And that's when we cover to help with that. We cover their transpo and we provide lunch when they're here. And it's a bit of a shorter day. We kind of account some of their travel time as part of the work day to make it a bit of a perk for coming in person. That's some of the stuff that we've done. And I, like you, I think that's working. It's working three days in person. I maybe would be better from like an organizational point of view. I'm a small company. So maybe I'm a bit lazy. I don't want people <laughs> I want to work from home too, but can you speak to that? Like how is the hybrid set up? What's working for Globe? You're happy sharing that. And, and yeah. Okay, our current arrangement is that we are on three days, work in the office, two days. So the way you choose your three days in the office, we have an official company day. That's every Wednesday. So every Wednesday, we are full house. That means you will ex you can expect most of the floors, if not all the floors, are loaded with human bodies. Okay, Because you got to be here. Wednesday is globe day. Okay, Now, the two other days... One day can be that day when your team has most of your meetings. Mm -hmm. And then the other day is up to you when you want to be here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, in addition to that, we also have what we call TBD. TBD is Thursday by the desk. Thursday by the desk is from 12 noon onwards every Thursday. As much as possible, we don't book people for meetings because you're supposed to use that period of time for you to do anything that's you know desk job yeah thinking time just don't use it for sleeping okay yeah. Yeah. don't use it to go to the mall okay because that's meant to be your me time your creative time or whatever you want to call it so that's pretty much how we manage our work schedule in a week okay now mm -hmm. There are a few instances, Daryl, when some employees would ask, I'm going to Canada, for example, to visit my family. Can I do remote work for eight weeks? On exception basis, we actually allow that because we are mindful that some people just need to take a break and still work at the same time because, I don't know, there are some people like that. They're on vacation. They can just fully unplug. They still want to work. Yeah. They still want the madness of uh, emails and meetings. So even if they're outside the Philippines, they still want to work. So on exception basis, we actually allow that. So that's pretty much how we do work around Globe. I love that. So the TBD day, the by Thursday by the desk day, that is, is that because I've heard of companies where they allocate certain time slots per week where it's almost like a work on what you think is important yes. for the company. Yes. It's not for meetings. It's not for your assigned tasks. It can be if you want, but you can also use it for projects that are self-directed that apply to your work. Is that what you're talking about? 
Exactly. Now, the only reason why we call it TBD, because in our company, we always use TBD as to be determined. Example, there's work that we're not really sure what's going to be included as scope. We say TBD. Or yeah. let's say there's a role that's vacant and we don't know yet who will fill that role. We put TBD. So it's a it's an acronym that a lot of people can relate to. So we coined Thursday by the desk around that uh, acronym so that it has a clear register, people know what it is, and people know that they should devote that TBD for work that they want to do, except meetings. Yeah. But of course, I have to tell you, it's not a perfect world. There are violators. And I'm also one of the violators sometimes. If, they're, if the week is fully packed and I really need the Thursday, the way we do that, Daryl, is we ask for permission. Mm -hmm. We ask for permission. I know it's TBD, but would it be all right if I ask you for a meeting? If not, it's okay. You can decline it. I'll find another time. Right. So there are some instances when you can actually quote and quote violate the TBD. But right. as much as possible, not every week you violate the TBD because it defeats the whole purpose. Yeah, I, I love that. I think that's that's I think that's great. I think that's really powerful. So excellent. Okay. Three days in the office. Wednesday everyone has to be there. Thursday by the desk, TBD day. I think that's powerful. Mm -hmm. Now with all the changes that have happened with technology, geopolitically, can you maybe share what you think some of the specific skills and behaviors that you, if not globe, globe or as an individual field expert, uh, if you don't want to talk about what globe thinks, but what are some skills or behaviors that you believe are important for your staff or for staff to improve and develop? considering the new climate that we're in right now? Most important, I will not use resilience anymore because I think that term has been used and abused mm -hmm. since pandemic time, right? But I'll cite what we always say as growth mindset. Okay? And growth mindset is being open to new things, being open to different ideas, being open to try other uh, ways of doing things, it's basically being open to growing as an individual, as an employee, as a company, as a team, right? So that particular mindset, I think, has really served us well because we know this. When the pandemic hit us, Daryl, we all thought we will we would not be able to survive this environment. Right. We all thought that working inside our room, our our the room in our houses will not work, but right. it actually worked, right? We all thought that having a few people out in the field taking care of our network and IT wouldn't work, but it actually worked. Okay? And for a time when we were slowly going back to the office and we were partly, some people were in the field, some people were at home, we thought it's not going to work, but it worked. Okay? Mm -hmm. And I think it's not just about resilience, it's also about growth mindset because when you are open to new things, when you're open to trying out things that you thought were not possible, things that would not work, then you're actually exploring, opening new horizons. So that, I think, is so important. To this day, we still advocate that. In fact, we have a full uh, curriculum, and we call it Digital for All. Okay, Digital for All is digital competencies for all our globe. Okay. And a foundation of that is what we call growth mindset. We believe that without that kind of mindset, you will not be able to take in any new skills because it always starts with the right mindset, with the right, right yes, with the right frame of mind. Without that, even if I put you in a week-long training, even if I give you the best mentors, even if I put you in a new role that will give you the exposure and experience that you need, it's not going to work because the mind is not there. Right. The mind has to be conditioned. Okay, That's why the growth mindset is so important. Yeah, I love that. How do you measure the effectiveness? You said that there's an online curriculum. How do you measure the effectiveness of your current training program? Oh, there are many ways to measure effectiveness and training practitioners would know this. There are levels by which you measure effectiveness. Okay, The highest, of course, is return on revenue, which is 
you put people in a particular intervention and you actually make money out of it, meaning you get the equivalent revenue or they make sales out of it. But we also know that is the hardest to do. Okay, And from a pragmatic standpoint, the way we look at it is, if I put you in a particular intervention, I will look for the most tangible way by which I can see that you have actually given me ROI for that intervention. So example, if I take a look at growth mindset, then we take a look at what new projects are they actually doing? What new assignments are they taking on? What new initiatives have they actually given birth to? So things like that. There are simple, more pragmatic ways by which you can measure the effectiveness and even the results of what you invest on in terms of people interventions. But if there's an intervention that can demonstrate that people in it help either make more in sales or help the company improve its bottom line, is that right saying that's the best but the hardest one to find? Oh, yes, for sure. It will be the hardest one to find and the hardest one to measure too because especially if you're measuring ROI in terms of revenue because sometimes you cannot exactly correlate Okay, I send Daryl to this particular training on consultative selling. Is the extra revenue that he's generating because of this program? Or right. is it because or is he gonna make it anyways? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. You have to train people as fast as they go, right? If you don't invest in them, you cannot also expect them uh to perform what you did not teach them. It's almost like kids. You can't build, you can't break what you don't build. If you didn't right. teach your kids manners, right. if they do something bad, you should not be getting mad at them. You have to build them first. Yeah. Okay? You have yeah. to train, develop them. What are some of the habits that you feel are most important that help people on their path to success? Obviously, HR and transformation, you see so many people across the whole organization. What habits do you think matter most? What habits? Oh, a lot of good habits. In addition to what I said about having growth mindset, I also think it's about having that, I would say, you mentioned it earlier, the can-do attitude. Because in anything, you will always have stumbling blocks. You will always have challenges. You will always have hurdles. And you need to be able to find a way, sometimes, not really sometimes, but most of the time, on your own. If the minute you face a challenge and your mindset is, okay, I'm just going to move on to the next one, you're not going to get anywhere. So personally, I'll give an example. Last year, I was given a project. And in the beginning, I'm like, oh my God, how am I even going to do this? All I was given was a piece of paper with drawings, okay, with drawings and scribbles. I was tempted, Daryl, to ask my boss, how do you do this exactly? Who's going to do this? But at the back of my mind, there yeah. was a voice saying, it is you. You will figure out how to do it and you will be the one to do it. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy because I ended up doing it. I ended up thinking how to do it. Okay? But my point there is, in the beginning, you will be daunted. In the beginning, you will be like, oh my God, how do I do this? Mm -hmm. But you just have to take it all in. Find your moment where you can think clearly, put it all together. But just that's why Justice League is a team because even if I'm the most brilliant person, I cannot do it alone. I need a team who will help me do it. So that is so important. Nurturing, building that team is so important. So in the beginning, you get daunted, you figure it out, you get your team together you guide them towards the right direction. You also give them the right pep talk because I remember that same task I was telling you. I was so tempted to tell them we're not going to make it. Right. But you know what right. I said? Because they're already asking me, how are we going to achieve those targets? I said, because I will put the roadmap together. We will put the roadmap together and we will do it. Okay? Our work is at stake here. We will do it. And then... Midway, we were like, okay, we're not going to achieve it. I said, we will trust. We have the plan laid out. The plan is only as good as the execution. We will work together. You just have to make sure that we dance together. Well. Yes. At the end of the year, we were actually able to do it, Daryl. It wow. wasn't easy. Yes, I will tell you, it wasn't easy. It wasn't smooth sailing. We had a lot of our ups and downs, but we were able to do it. 
This year, we have to do it again. They're asking the same question. I just said, give me the target. I will do it for you. Okay? But I need to rally my team because I can't do it alone. I love that. I love that quote. A plan is only as good as its execution. That stuff. Because I know, like, I've achieved things in my career. But I know that doesn't matter. Like, in terms, I, I had a book that hit number one on Amazon once upon a time. And somebody said to me, Daryl, you'll be able to use this to promote yourself for the next, for the rest of your life. And in my mind, I just thought maybe I can, I'll mention it. But for me, like pressure on myself, I consider myself a high performer. And as a high mm -hmm. performer, that was yesterday. I got to do something today. That was great. I'm glad I did that. But today, what am I going to do? And so there's no summit to this mountain. And so I love that, that I'm just so into grit. And next, my, one of my favorite quotes about mastery is do it until it becomes dull. And then keep going until it becomes beautiful. And I just love that. And anyways, I just love that. I'm, I wrote that quote down. That's a writer. It's a writer. I like that. Yeah. I, like that. I can relate to that. And to your point, yes, I'm also like that. I did it yesterday. I will do it again today. I will do it better. But I'm not competing with anybody because maybe it's age or maybe it's just me, Daryl. I don't really look for validation because... I think it's a bit of both. I think as I get it's older... Probably, yeah. It's, it's just probably a process. I know if I stick to the pro, you can't guarantee outcomes. I had a client recently, he kept trying to get me to promise outcomes and guarantee the fee for the project on those outcomes. And I was, I just walked away. I was like, I'm not going to promise outcomes. I hope so. I really hope so. But I can't guarantee. All I can do is obsess over the process. That's all I can do is obsess over the process. I'm a process guy. Yes. Maybe it'll produce the result. Maybe it won't. But like you said, if we have the plan and we execute well, that's a scientific method, right? Karl Popper had a, a formula for the scientific method. He said it was P1 plus TS mm -hmm. plus EE -E equals P2. Problem mm -hmm. one plus temporary solution, eliminate the errors we do through observation, experimentation, data collection, and collaboration with others. And then if you do it, you arrive at problem two. If you don't arrive at problem two and you're still at problem one, then your temporary solution was flawed. And hopefully you have learnings that you can go back and repeat the process, iterative thing. It's P1 plus TS plus EE equals P2. And so I'm like, you want to do hundred sales? That's great. We're going to, but I can't guarantee. I'm not, I don't want that drama. I don't want that stress. I will obsess over process. That's a pretty good formula. Okay? That's a pretty good formula. And I think what fuels that formula is your obsession to get it solved, to get it done. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm the type of guy, at least for me, whenever I have an issue, I like to throw every potential solution I can at it that won't negatively impact everything else. Mm -hmm. I, like I pulled a muscle. And I got one of those like tens electro zappers for the muscle. I was doing pool work. I'm hanging from the pull up bar. I'm taking extra pro. I'm doing it all. I'm mm -hmm. like, if it's not going to hurt anything else, and I do that with everything. But anyway, enough, enough about me. Where do you see the future of things going? Because there's a lot of people that are concerned about AI replacing jobs. And again, we've had some massive technology uh, leaps and geopolitically, I keep mm -hmm. mentioning that, but things in the world. And then we've got demographics. Well, one word for me, Daryl, is relevance. Okay? And relevance is about making sure that you keep yourself relevant, making sure that you keep your people relevant. Because th the way it works is we know this, even without AI. Back in the days when we saw one technology coming up after another, we kept telling ourselves at some point we will become outdated. We will be replaced by these technologies. And now the buzzword is AI. Right. And people are going crazy because they're thinking, oh, my job will soon be replaced by chat GPT or by some other generative AI that we are seeing in the market. Right. It can be open, Daryl, because there are jobs that can be replaced by that. In fact, one of our conversations, because last year we tried exploring chat GPT for a particular initiative. And I was like telling my team, See, this is a very good reason why we have to keep upskilling because at some point, only one of us will be needed. That person who will feed the right 
prompts. Yeah. Statements, problem statements into chat and GPT. The rest of us will not be needed anymore. And so we don't want that scenario to happen. So we have to keep upgrading ourselves so that we will remain relevant. Right. Okay? Now, in our case, Daryl, we are actually blessed because we work in a company that is big on developing growing people we it is our advocacy we want to make sure that we grow our people it takes two to tango right it takes two to tango in the sense that i will give you all the interventions that you need but you also have to make the most out of it okay that's why when we send people to certain training programs we make sure we remind them that hey this is an investment you have to take it seriously and we also do our part to make sure that they return it back to, meaning there's an ROI, they apply it, because otherwise it will all be used. In the Philippines though, and this is a learning for me, Daryl, remember I mentioned to you earlier, I went on a vacation last week, two weeks back. And in that con country that I visited, I was so impressed because they actually let people buy books as part of their allowance. And I'm like... Maybe I can try that in my company too because personally, I love books. I have a, my personal library at home. Okay, And then here goes the person, one of our employees, because I was saying, hey, I discovered something really great from my recent trip. Why don't we allocate a portion of our training to books? And the person said, hey, Avery, you work in the field. Unfortunately, our culture may no longer be the book culture. Okay, And now this is debatable. Okay? It is only, debatable. It is debatable, but Here's the thing, you go to certain countries like I think UK and Japan, you will see a lot of people reading books. In the Philippines, you see a lot of people reading from their phone. Now that's the trick, okay? Maybe ebooks <laughs> is my I, middle ground, Daryl. I don't know. I there's something about having a book and writing in it. I was oh. already I'm trying to find because I have so many PDFs. I don't know if this is legal or not, but when I lived in Vietnam. It was I for two three dollars I could get a PDF printed in into a book with actually I got some, that one's holding something up anyways I got these books covered it's just like a cardboard cover and just small like small not full eight and a half by eleven but I printed so many books here's an example when it lost the cover but it's just like two staples oh my God. I don't know if you can see it but I printed so many of these I had to give them all away when we moved when we left but I would do it again in a heartbeat because some things. Just the value of having that as a reference, just to pull it off the shelf. Hey, we're working on this project. I remember there was that great book. Boom, you grab the book. Like you don't even need, all you need is like one great idea from a book. The book you don't own, you can't read. And the book you don't read can't help you. And exactly. yeah, so I- I can I, totally relate, Daryl. I have my notebook right now. Jim Rohn's the godfather of personal development. Tony Robbins at 17 years old was like in a, worked for him. And Jim Rohn was doing conferences and like self-help stuff. That's how Tony Robbins got his starting. And Jim Rohn used to have his thing. He said one of his nieces or something said, why'd you spend so much money? Because he got this new notebook. And he said, my, my niece or something was like, why would you spend so much money on an empty book? Because he bought this really nice empty notebook. And he goes, so mm -hmm. I have a reason to find valuable things to write in there. And I know for me, when I grew up, I was, my room was in the basement and the room beside my room was where my dad stored all of his books. And it was a huge library and just out of boredom and hanging out in there. I feel like that fueled my passion for books. I was even talking to my wife about that. Like, we need that for our daughter. We just need the house to be full of books so she can just pick something up and learn something. I forget who said it, but they were talking about, you should all buy all the books of all the greatest thought leaders in this world, the Aristotles, the Plato's. You could sit in your house all night and not think of these great things they thought of on your own. That's the value of the book is to surround yourself with that. Out of mind, out of sight, out of mind. I'm trying to do co-worker through you, but that's... Speaking of books, recently one of my friends said, oh, you should just get this app. It's Blinkist because it gives you the summary of all books. And I'm like, I don't like summaries. I like the pleasure and pain of reading an entire book page yep. by page cover to cover because there's a different pleasure that i get reading books yeah. and at the same time going back to my point earlier that's really how you keep yourself relevant right yep. you can just read a book one day and you learn something new every time you read with all the changes happening daryl i think one thing that will always remain is that you need to keep yourself relevant whether it's by reading a book going through training going to a different country to learn something different, just keep yourself updated and relevant. Yeah. To, to your point, 
A lot of people talk about the machines are going to replace us. They said that when calculators came out, because before you'd have to have a team of mathematicians. And mm -hmm. then they said that again when spreadsheets came out, because you could replace a whole department with a single spreadsheet using formulas. And we're all going to be working. The machines are going to replace us all. And I just had a friend, he talked about this one company. He said, I'm not excited about this company because they've got great chips, AI chips. I'm excited because I think one day their chip will host souls. And I'm like, that is such nonsense because we're never, our species, unless our species collectively decides to roll over and die, we're never going to want to give up control and roll mm -hmm. over and die. We're always going to want to control the butt. We always, we're always want to going to want to drive the bus and the bus is just a tool. All these things are tools. So mm -hmm. the whole concept of uploading a soul to I, I upload memories and thoughts, maybe we'll upload download. Sure. But I just don't. I don't buy into that. I think that it's just a different, we're cyborgs right now. Look at you. You're in the different part of the country. I'm in a different part of the country. I'm using <laughs> my physical self to bark at my laptop, which is converting it into a ones and zeros to send to you. And you're like, we're already, so this whole AI is going to replace us. I just do, you, people don't understand the ecosystem they live in. Like, Are we, you even talking to a real person right now, Daryl? For all you know, I'm just an AI yeah, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. But I just, yeah, I, I did it. AI is never going to be able to bond with you that way. I just don't. I just don't see it. I just don't it's see a long it. Long way to go. Yeah. There's a heart to heart connection. If you give someone a hug, you can try this. Next time you hug someone, intentionally try to hug them heart to heart. And you'll feel the hug is stronger. And that's oh. the sort of thing AI will never replace, I don't think. So this has been a great call. You've had such great answers. I've got a couple pages of notes. Is there anything I haven't asked you that I should have asked you? Maybe you should ask me why am I in the office today and why am I not in a beach like you? Seriously, I think it's been a very interesting discussion I had with you, Daryl. If anything else, I just want to say that there's still a lot of changes that will happen. Mm. You talked about AI. Maybe there's something different or new that will come up in the future, but the name of the game is to just keep getting yourself upgraded, just like a software, right? You just have mm -hmm. to keep yourself getting upgraded. You just have to try new experiences, learn something new, be open, have that growth mindset, nothing too small that you shouldn't do it, nothing too scary that you shouldn't even try. So it's all about learning something new every day. Yeah, and focusing on results. Yes, of course. This with your, like, you, you started the call with that. I think we should end the call on that. I think that's great. Keep upgrading yourself. Keep trying new things with a focus on excellence and results. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. that will see people through. Avery, what a great conversation. If people have questions that they want to reach out, connect with you one-on-one, -on -one, what are some of the best ways for them to get in touch? I'm active in LinkedIn. You can always search me via LinkedIn. You can also check me out in Instagram, but you'll see a little bit personal stuff there. So. Sure. Up to you. LinkedIn, yes. Instagram. So on in, on LinkedIn, you can go check out Avery, A-V-E-R-Y, Banta, B-A-N-T-A. It's her if it yes. says CMP and S-A-F-E. And she's working at Globe Telecom here in the Philippines. That's A-V-E-R-Y, Avery, Banta, B-A-N-T-A. Avery, thank you so much. It has been an honor and a pleasure knowing you have your own direct reports, your own projects, your own family, take care of. Thank you for coming and sharing with my audience and I so we can all do a little bit better.